In this lecture, we will learn how to modify your database. There are several reasons you may want to modify your database instance. For example, when we were creating the database initially, we created the database with a small size of m5d.large class. Or you could want to change the instance identifier. So in order to modify your database instance, you want to check the select the database, then select modify. On the settings option, for the license model and the database engine, you can change these two options. You can only set them when you are creating the database. For the database identifier, you can easily change the name to whatever you want. If you want to use AWS Secret Manager, which is a password manager, to manage your password, then you can enable this option. To set a new password for the admin user, you could change it right here. For the instance configuration, we use the dbm5d.large. So we, from here, we can change the instance configuration to increase or decrease the size and performance of our database. So I'm going to select the M5 large option. For the storage settings, you can change your storage type from the general purpose SSD GP2 to SSD GP3 or provision IOPS SSD or the magnetic option. You can allocate more space to your database as well as you can enable auto scaling for the storage. If you enable storage auto scaling, you can set a maximum threshold. So whenever the database grows beyond 20 gigabytes, then it will extend until it reaches the maximum threshold. For availability and durability, if you enable mirroring or always on, then RDS will create a replica in a different region and will automatically fail over for unplanned or planned outages. So for now, we want to keep this as no. For mission critical applications, then you may want to enable Marine are always on. For connectivity, you have the option to change your DB subnet group, your security group, or your certificate authority. So currently, our database only allows SQL Server authentication. To enable Microsoft Windows Authentication, then you'll enable this option. However, you'll need to configure your Active Directory. So if we select Browse, you'll see that I don't have an Active Directory, and then I'll need to create an Active Directory. So let's cancel, cancel, and go back to the RDS database. So let's scroll down. For monitoring your database, Amazon provides performance insight. So you can enable this option, however, this will come at an additional cost. So for now, I am not going to enable it until we reach a section of performance tuning and monitoring. Under additional configuration, you have the option to change your database parameter group as well as your option group. You can configure your backup settings, right? So currently, there are no backups being taken because the backup retention period is set to zero. You can change the maintenance window of your database backups. Later on, you'll learn more about backups and how to configure them on the maintenance window. If you enable backup replication to another region, right, the replication will automatically create backups of your database instance in a selected region for disaster recovery. You can choose to export your SQL agent log as well as your error log to Amazon CloudWatch logs. For maintenance, you can enable auto minor version upgrade. So this would normally run during your maintenance window. And delete protection will protect your database from being accidentally deleted. So we're going to make a small change and change the maintenance window to a Saturday at 9 p.m. UTC. And the duration will be 8 hours. So select continue. On this page, you have a summary of the modifications that will be done to your RDS instance. Under the Schedule Modification section, you can choose to apply the changes immediately or apply during the next Schedule Maintenance window. So I'm going to keep it as during the next Maintenance window, then select Modify Database Instance. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a look at how we can delete a database instance.